Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Gornson. I'd like to welcome you to the Six Steps to a Better Business webinar. Um, and you know what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be sharing Action Coach's Six Step System to grow a successful business that works harder, so you don't have to, and you can enjoy more life. How does that sound? Pretty cool, huh? But I want to begin out here today is to thank you for um, uh, for your time. Uh, because really time is one of your most valuable assets. You know, it, business doesn't mean busyness and I'm just running from here to here to here. And just If I'm busy, that means I'm successful. No, that means that you're like a chicken with your head cut off, right? You know, a wise man once says you could run out of money, you could always make it back, but once you spent your time, it's gone forever. So it's really, it's how you invest your time. That is the secret to your success. So let me start out a little bit by um, uh, introducing myself to you a little bit about me is I've owned and operated the Jacksonville Office of Action Coach for about the past 15 years, uh, starting in 2014. Uh, I guess as of right now that I'm starting my 16th year as an action coach. And Action Coach is the world's largest coaching organization with over a thousand offices in 70 different countries around the world. And it's my job as a coach is, is really for the time that we have here together is really is to sharpen your business intuition by showing you factors that make your businesses thrive. And then also how to help you create high performance by working on solutions that matter. And that's really what uh, the focus that I am going to be it uh, really try to stress on here today because you know once you get down with at, at the end of the seminar you know failure is not an option because really what what is the only failure the only failure in life whatever is the failure to participate so i guarantee if you give a hundred percent you're going to get a hundred percent if you go through this this webinar that we're going to be talking about today and you, and you take away some of these little gold nuggets that I'm going to give you and how to grow your business, a successful business. And if you start applying it, you will see results. I see it happen over and over as many times as, as possible. So really one of the biggest learning killers is, is, is really is coming in there and really is having an I know attitude. You know, we've all had, you know, if anyone's had teenage kids and you sit there and you try to talk to them and it's like, yeah, dad, I know, I know, I know, right? What happens when they're doing that? They're shutting you off. There's, and when we say, I know, we're shutting off any uh, means to be able to attract new um, ideas to come into our brain to help us grow. And so instead of saying, I know, and you're, because the stuff that we're going to talk about isn't brain surgery stuff. It's basic business principles, but it's going to be presented in an organized way. So instead of saying, yeah, I know I've heard that before, I want you to say, isn't that interesting? I want you to think about how can you apply this concept that you already know differently in your business, because that is really the secret to your success. Because what you're going to expect out of here today is what I'm going to call our BFOs. What a BFO is, a blinding flash of the obvious. What do you do when you get that BFO, you know, that aha moment? Write it down. I'm going to be going through a lot of information in the next uh, half hour, 45 minutes or so. And it really, you need to really sit down and, and focus and take some notes. Even though we're recording it, it, it will stick with you if you take some note. But if you get these uh, blinding flashes of the idea of the obvious, these BFOs, please write them down. All right, so that's, let's start off with some of the basics. Because they say the most uh, important space in your business is the space between your two ears, is mindset is a very key to business success. And it's the power and the point. That point is that little nugget that's inside of your gut. And that's where success or failure will start. Because we're gonna sit down and we could either be draining ourselves or be around people that drain us and and it could just drain the power out of us or we can add energy to ourselves and to those around us so how do we do that how do we de-energize ourselves is being around people that are always blaming others they're coming up with excuses or they're just in denial that they are the problem right is like we all because if we're that we're acting that below 
this point here and this point is just is is really just sucking the energy out of us because if we if we continue to do this and we're around people we end up with a team that looks like this you know it's monkey see monkey do it's like a see no evil hear no evil speak no evil but what we want to do is successful entrepreneurs are going to focus on is really taking hold of the oars of their business and and taking responsibility for the results they want are accountable for the results but most importantly they're going to take ownership and being accountable and responsible because when we do that our, our both us and all of our employees around us are going to gain the power and the energy to be able to grow your business and, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this today but is as a business owner you could drive and uh, your employees to be below that point by blaming and having them come up with excuses and denial and, and whatnot, or you could uplift your employees. And that's a really important part of being a leader within a business. So when we talk about business growth, right? You know, we start off with a startup and that's, you know, where we already have one to five employees where they're working by ourselves and we start, we start adding some other ones in there. Then we start building up um, and we have somewhere between six and 15 employees and then, okay, things are really doing good and we're really starting to scale up and we got 16 all the way up to 250 employees. This business is really growing. And then, you know, we can hit that top of the hill and we got over 250 employees and whatnot. But what we found is that somewhere between startup and scale up, there's a area in there which is called the owner's trap. The, the, build, the, 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 the business tries to start building up, but it gets stuck. The owner is trapped and the business can't grow beyond the business owner. Because when you have to set the sound and think about it and think about your business, you know, is your business driving you or are you driving your business? When your business is stuck, when you're trapped, it's you're the only one that could solve problems. You're the only one that you're, uh, customers come to to solve the problems or, or what's going on. Your, your employees can't make a decision without you. Instead of having a system-based business that works without you, and so then you are driving that system. You're driving those business to be able to do more with less. Because, you know, a lot of people really in their businesses, they don't own a business, they just own a job, right? What is a job? It just means just over broke, right? We've all heard that before. You know, it's like, you know, our our goal is is how can I make a how can I do enough this week to just pay my bills, right? That's just a job, right? We what the job of a of a business is not only to pay bills, but to generate a profit and to build wealth. You know, our definition at Action Coach, or if you really want to to sit down and take a look at it before I get into that, is what really causes business failure. Business failure isn't caused by cash flow and poor employees. It's ca really caused by burnout. Those are symptoms of being burnt out, of those are what happen because we're, we're not actively involved in our business. And what really keeps us from being actively invo involved in our business and getting burnt out is that we there's no vision of what we're trying to create. We just feel like a, you know, um, a gerbil in a cage and just running that wheel, just running, running. Don't feel like we're getting anywhere. So that's why it's really important to have a plan to set goals and to be able to understand and mark down your achievements of where you're going and what you're trying to do. So for action, our definition of a successful business, we need to start off with understanding what that is. It's a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. Because if it can't work without you, your business is broke. It's as simple as that. You don't own a business, you just own a job. And before we go into all the, the details of what we're gonna be talking about today, I wanna share with you some case studies of some different types of clients that I've worked with over the years and, and do some case studies and, and let you see what, were, what are some of their challenges were, what did, we, how, what did we do 
and then how did we solve those problems? So first, we're looking with a company that's a non-destructive testing company. Uh, worked with them over uh, 10, 15 years, I think it really, it's, you know, I started working with them. The owner had been in business for over 25 years. He was really burnt out. The business was profitable, but he was looking for a way out. He was, because he was running in the business, right? He had no value and, yeah, he came to one of these seminars and he found that he really didn't have any value to his business. If he was ready to sell, if he wanted to leave, he basically sold his equipment and go fishing. So what do we start doing? We start working together. Over a period of time, we started recruiting and developing a and developing an engaged team. We identified and developed key marketing differences between him and his competition. So he sold on value and not on price. We created systems within the business to deliver consistency for his clients. And then most importantly, we aligned the team to the company culture. It got to the point where if they hired somebody or brought somebody onto the team that didn't align to the culture, he didn't even have to know about it because the team would tell them immediately. And, and they, because they didn't want to ruin the culture that they had developed. So what do we do? We doubled the revenue and their profit margins. The, stop, the business owner stopped traveling on jobs unless he wanted to. Right. He opened up new offices. Um, he started taking a month off. And actually last year he just sold his business. And now is him and his wife are traveling around the world. Next one was the CPA firm that I was working with for a little over a year or so. You know, they were a profitable firm, but they were looking to go the grow. The business the partners knew what to do, but they get cut kept getting caught up in the day to day and they needed accountability to stay focused on working on the business instead of in it. You know, so we started working out with a, a created a five year business plan and a cash flow projection, right? They sort of knew how to do this, but it, it's harder to do it for yourself than it is for somebody else. And you know, we identified some key functions and roles within the business. We started recruiting new team members and then we aligned the team to those company goals. And what we've ended up doing is we started doubling, doubling their revenue and their profit margin. We started hiring a new staff that were aligned to their company goals. Started really the most important thing that they did, and they and they wanted to grow faster than they did, but they realized that they needed to create these SOPs to create that consistent experience. And what it really allowed them to do is they found out they were reducing their payroll and increase the output and the profits from their current team itself. Let's see, what was the next one? The next one is a, uh, it was a uh, small uh, PNC insurance, Avenue property and casualty insurance company. Again, it was a small firm, but they were looking to grow. But, and the business owner felt stuck and they were looking to exit, you know, and they just needed, a, again, it's the same type of thing. They needed accountability to stay focused on working on the business instead of in it. She was a great insurance agent, but really didn't know how to run or manage an agency. So what we did is help her to reveal the vision of what she wanted for her business, helped her identify what the key functions and the roles that are within that business and who owned those roles, and then created a company culture and aligned the team to that com company culture, and then created and tracked sales KPIs for accountability. So now what we saw is increased profitability, like their uninsured motorist policies were up over 240%. I think it's actually up higher than that since I, I put these slides together. Um, they've increased their, their cross spells by 75%. But again, they created SOPs to create a consistent experience. The, the owner is, is managing their team and working less and enjoying more life. She's actually opened a second location. So both of these last two people is, is, is they were looking to, 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 weren't looking to grow. They were looking for exit strategies, but at the same time, they ended up, they were so involved and got so motivated by their business, they ended up opening second locations. And then the last one was a home improvement company. So these sales were fall. When I started working with them was when the real estate crashed and, and they needed, again, accountability to stay focus on working on the business instead of in the business. You see a consistent theme going on. They had no profits. They had very poor uh, cash flow and the worker, uh, the owners were working all the time in the business. Um, you know, and so what we started doing is we, they needed cash flow fast. So we started to focus on where was that low hanging fruit to, to increase sales. We started tracking their sales and expenses and, and created KPIs, key performance indicators to, for accountability. 
we really, and this is the most important thing, is align is created a company culture and align their team to that culture. Again, and then develop the systems and the SOPs to incre that increase profitability for the business. So we see here we went from 1.7 million to in 2009 to 10 years later to 7 million dollars. They were 4,600 hours in the 1,000 hours in the red to over 500,000 hours in profitability. It was an SOPs that were created for that, again, that consistent experience. Created a full engaged team aligned to company goals. Owners were, ma were managing the team and working less but enjoying more life. And they actually bought a new company uh, property because they needed areas to be able to store their equipment because they were growing so much. But you see there's just a lot of consistent themes between what their pains are and the solutions were, but they needed someone to help them break through that clutter and help them stay consistent on what they needed to do to generate the results that they were looking for, the business that they were looking for. So how do we do that? There's four Ps to the Action Coach system. Really, whoops, sorry about that. It starts off with purpose. What is your company why? What's the core focus or why do you do what you do within your business? You know, this is where we do strategic planning, quarterly planning, but most importantly is, you're, is having to a daily to-do list. This is where the, the, this is the most important goals for any person working in a business is what do I need to accomplish today that will move me towards my weekly, monthly, quarterly goal and fit within my strategic plan. Next is, is our process. Is this is our operations, our systems for sales and marketing and finance and admin, all the systems that we have developed in the business is how we do things. And then we sit down and we look at the performance. This is the results. What's our key performances that we're measuring every day? Do we have a dashboard or a scorecard that we can look at to see how well we're doing? This is where we're holding people accountable to the results that we expect from each and one, from each person. And then last, really, the core is really is the people, right? This is how we're recruiting the right people. Do we have the uh, engaged team? This is where we work on leadership development and how do we uh, develop the, the personal skills and the training skills to be able to do our jobs effectively. So those are the ways that we work it. Now, what we've done is this, all businesses, these are where areas that we work in it, but how do we systematically create a business that could work without you? And what we've done is we've created the six steps to, uh, to really to scale up your business to get you massive results. So and I'm gonna go through these really fast right now and then we're gonna spend some time with each one of these. So mastery is about eliminating chaos in your business. So you start getting some stability. Niche is we start creating predictable cash flow. We're selling on value and not on price. We're differentiating ourselves within our, uh, among our competition in our industry. So now we have some cash and now we can invest it in, in systems and leverage and become more efficient. Once we're more efficient, we have those systems in place. We're now, we're saving time. We're now working on, on creating and developing our A team that will structure for growth. And then now we start working on, and we start developing our general manager to replace us in the business because we now have a well-oiled machine. And then the last one is the results or the freedom stage is what I even like to call it. And this is where we have passive income from the business. We're ready, the business is ready to be sold. Is in, or, you know, This is where we're looking to see if we could be buying different businesses out there as well from the cash flow that we're generating from, from, uh, from this current business. But again, it really depends on how big, where do you want to grow? That's what we help and coach our clients to. to be able, but it's all about developing massive results in the business based on where you want to go and the type of business you want to achieve. So our first step, excuse me, the first step is mastery. Mastery, again, is creating that commercial enterprise. There's four areas within our business that we need to master. First is destination mastery, is where are we going with the business? We, because we don't have a map that tells us where we go and where we are now and where we want to go, we're not going to get to where we're going to go. If you want to go across country and you don't have a map and you have no idea where you are, you have no idea which way to go to get start to get there. You might 
start out and get directions, but it's going to, you're going to go the long way, not the short way. The next one is money mastery. Do we know what the break even point is in our business? Do we know if our product or our services are priced correctly? Because if they're not priced correctly and we go into the niche stage and we start really revving up this business and start bringing in more customers, it's going to create more chaos in our business. That's why we need to have time mastery. Are we focused on the most productive things possible within the business or are we wasting time? Because if we're wasting time now and we rev up our business, what's going to happen is we're going to get frustrated. We're going to be making mistakes. And then the last one is delivery mastery, is we need to make sure that we have our basic systems down and be able to deliver our, our product and our service in the way our client wants. Because if we don't have this part down to a key, when we start revving up our business, we're going to have a lot of upset customers. So these, it's important that we go through each of these four areas to be able to master in our business. So the next one, and this is where we're going to spend a lot of time on, is niche. Is how do we create predictable cash flow in the business? Niche is all about creating a commercial, profitable enterprise. So what does that mean? So what is niche? Right? Does that, do we think about it as niche, niche, depending on where in the world you, you are, right? But for us, price, it means no price competition, right? We're selling on value and not on price. We never lose a sale because of price. We lose it because we have not created enough value in the mind of our customers. When we teach sales training, when I'm sitting there, I follow the single sales principle. And this is the main thing that our whole sales system is uh, derived from, is this basic principle, is that knowing that people buy when, they, uh, when we understand what their compelling need is, and it's met by our credible solution that offers perceived value. We're not negotiating price. What, we're, what we negotiate is the value that the customer sees. And once we understand that, we start seeing profitability in the, in the business start to rise. So how do we create our niche? Two things we need to focus on is what is our unique selling proposition? And then, you know, how do we differentiate ourselves from our competition? And then the next one is, do we have a guarantee? You know, a, some businesses says, oh, I can't offer a guarantee. But if you think about what is the most, what's the biggest fear that your clients have? So let's say you're a um, certified financial planner. You know, you can't guarantee results, right? But what you can do is that what the biggest fear is that when the client has a problem, the start market begins to crash, is that you guarantee that you will get back with them within 24 hours. Boom. That could be enough to just sort of say, hey, if you can give me that guarantee, I'll be happy with you. You know, think about it, it's like when FedEx began, right? They started off with a guarantee that, you know, if it positively, it's going to positively get there overnight or it's free, right? So what, when, did they, when they created the company, what came first? Did they start and they built all the systems and, and whatnot and that allowed them to be able to deliver that? guarantee or do they start with the guarantee most people think we start with the systems but no it starts with the guarantee it starts with the vision of what are we trying to create and how do we build a business that delivers on that guarantee right and everybody that is hired within the company understands that is the most important thing so when we sit down and look at it you know what what does unique mean we're all different if you sit there and you look at all these different stones, each of these stones have very unique, get different shapes and different uh, designs on them. But there's only one that really stands out to you is that yellow one. So the, what makes you different is more important than what makes you unique, right? And sometimes how do we communicate that to our clients? So when we sit down and we look when we sit down and we, we, we think about how we're different, you know, here we have, you know, where would these restaurants, which ones would you rather eat at? You have mom's diners serving wholesale, wholesome food, right? It's good for you. It's whatnot. Then you have grandma's diner. We got free candy, free toys, no spinach, right? I guarantee you it's probably the exact same recipes, right? 
but they have two different markets that they're going after. If you try to take your kids to mom's diner, they're not going to be so happy because they have to eat, quote, unquote, wholesome food. But they love grandma's diner because they get at the end, they get some free candy, they get some free toys. They don't have to eat the spinach there, right? So it depends on who your target market is. What is it that they want? How do you deliver on their needs? And that's the thing that we have to focus on when we are creating that differentiation between us and our competition. So when we look at, when your accountant looks at sales and marketing, they look at it as an expense. Hope we don't have any accountants out here that are watching this, but is why is it as an expense? Because when they look at it, they look at it where it ends up on the P and L right? We're spending all this money, but they don't see anything coming back in for it, right? Now, entrepreneurs, what do we do? We look at sales and marketing as what? Yep, you got it. An investment. Why is it there is an investment for because for every dollar out, more dollars should come in. I say should because it doesn't always happen that way. But why is it true for some businesses and not for others? That's the important thing that we need to sit down and focus on because they do two things that most businesses won't do. They don't take the time to do it. It's the first thing that they do is they measure the results and then they test and see how can we improve those results. It's as simple as that. So we measure results and we, then we see what we need to do. Do we have to change the activity? We change the activity, boom, we measure results. It's not a one step two-step process. It's an ongoing process. It's as simple as that. So let's, let's take a look at what, what I mean by that. Because marketing is math. I know those of you that hate math really don't like what I'm about to say, but marketing is math. So let's say it's not all about creativity. It's really about math. And there's two sides of marketing. The first side is acquisition costs, is how much does it cost you to actually buy a customer? So think about this. We spent $3,000 in advertising. We got five customers. And so what does that mean? It means that you got $600. It costs you $600 for each customer you bought. Is that good or bad? If you're selling pencils, not so good, right? If you're selling high ticket items, it could be good, right? So, but the question is, is how do we reduce that? What do we need to do to tweak our advertising and our marketing Instead of getting five customers, every time we run that ad, we get six customers, right? But then on the second end of it is, what's our lifetime value of that customer, right? What, you know, if, you, if, if that customer is going to spend $6,000 a year for us for five years, that's $30,000 to you. You know, so a lot of times, how do we, if you have some businesses that are one and done, let's say like in the HVAC, uh, business. What are they doing to try to increase the, the lifetime value? Because for the most part, you're only going to sell a person one um, unit per household, right? But what you can now do is you could start selling them service agreements, right? Or what do we need to do to get our, if we, we just own a bakery, right? We have somebody that comes in, buys it once or twice a week, but what do we need to do to get them to come in once or twice a week for five years, right? That's the lifetime value. And if we can cre increase that one to two times to three times a week, right, that now increases that lifetime value of our client. Does that make sense? So the goal here is lower acquisition costs, increase lifetime value. All right. So let's take a look at this. We have, we're gonna, this is the most important thing. So if you haven't taken any notes up to this point, make sure you're doing it right now. So it really comes down to, we, we have these two red cars. Which one would you rather have, right? We've got this VW Golf and we have the Audi R8, right? Most people would say that Audi R8. It really depends on what you're looking for in a car, right? But the thing is, is they have one thing in common. They both have the exact same chassis that are used for the VW Golf or the, uh, the Audi R8, right? Just as these cars have the exact same chassis, every business of every business that's watching this webinar, you all have the same chassis. And once you understand that same chassis, then 
you can start putting on all your bells and whistles to either make a VW Golf or an Audi R8. So let's see, what, what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. So when we sit down and we look at this, most businesses knows how many clients they have, what the revenue is, how much profit um, they want to make, or how much profit they have made. But the thing is with each of these, they're all results, right? So what are the activities? What are the things? What are the factors that will lead to these results? So let's, let's take a look at them, put some numbers to this. So when we sit down and we look at it, we see the customer's revenues and profits. So if we break things down to the lowest common denominator, again, I'm going back to that math, math equation. Well, if you break it down to the lowest common denominator, every strategy that we dues to get more customers is either a strategy to increase the number of leads or to increase my conversion rate, my closing percentage in them. And if we want to go from customers and how do I increase my revenue is how do I get my customers to come back more often? What's the average number of transactions? And then how do I get them to spend more each time that they come back with me? So how do I increase that average dollar sale, my average ticket, my average billable hour, whatever it is. And then going from revenue to profits, how do I, what are strategies that I need to implement to increase my, my, my profits or my profit margins? So let's put some numbers to this. So if we sit there, we see we have 4, 000, um, or 400 uh, leads, we convert 25% of them, it gives us 100 customers, the average transaction is two, our average hour sale is 1,000, so that gives us $200,000 in revenue. Our margins are at 25%, so that gives us uh, $50,000 in profit for the business. So now, what I want you to do is, you know, all my clients always say is, hey, I need more leads. I need more, I need to develop more business. So my background's been in sales, advertising, marketing, and marketing research. So I was really good at helping my clients um, build and create, generate more leads within their business. So we put together, let's say we put together this campaign for your business and it goes from 400 to, and we increase it by 50%. So we go to 600, but our averages are still the same. So we have 25% there. So, but now we have 50 customers and we have 50% oh, more revenue and 50% more profitability. Most people would be happy. I would say you're exhausted because you have to deal with 200 more leads. You have to deal with 50 more customers. You know, the profits are in revenue is pretty nice, but it, it, it takes a lot of work. So what I'm going to do is going to teach you the secret to action coach client success is working smarter, not harder. Because what we're going to do is we're going to focus because we know that these are the five drivers of profitability and we're going to leverage ourselves and see what can we do if we can increase each of these by not 50%, but just 10%. You know, so if we start uh, putting in a guarantee and we start understanding how to sell on, sell on value and not price, it should be easy enough to increase our, our, our leads by, by, um, uh, by 10% and our conversion rate by 10%. So we go from 400 to 440 and then from 25% closing percentage to 27.5%. So that gives us 121 customers. Okay, so that's good. We're doing good. Again, now average transactions. What tra uh, strategies are we, we implementing to in get our customers to come back more often, to purchase more often? And it doesn't need to be everybody, but just 10% more. So it goes from 2 to 2.2%. Then what, what can we do to just increase our rates, our average ticket by 10%? You can go ahead and I guarantee if you just raise your prices by 10%, 99% of your customers will not even flinch or even realize that you have raised your rate. And so now that what that does is it now increases my revenue from 200 to 292,000. It's a little bit short from the 300,000 in my other scenario, but we're also working on profit margin. So that's 27 and a half percent now. And so now look at the profitability. So when we compare these two together, working harder, we have to get 160 more customers, uh, our leads, which lands us 29 more customers and gives us seven, almost 7,200 hours more in profitability, working our butts off, but we're not making, we're not keeping the money. <laughs> it's working smarter, we're working less and making more. We're driving about 5,500 hours more profitability working smart instead of, of, uh, of, of harder, if that makes sense to you, right?
So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. Right, so we could work smarter or harder. And really, when you sit down and look at it, that's a 46% increase in your average revenue, a 61% increase in your overlong profits, overall profits. Now, is that really possible in your business is what you're asking? Well, I've showed you some examples of, of clients that, yes, it is possible. I'm doing that with clients every day. Is it easy? No but it takes consistent strategies and implementation and accountability to make this question, to make this, these things happen. So what would you do if you had an extra 61% or in this case, it was an extra $30,000 in profitability within the business, right? Maybe drive a new car, get another home, spend time with really the most important people that are in your life. You know, that is, you know, we're in business to have a life not for it to suck it away from us, right? You know, Warren Buffett, you know, one of the most famous investors out there, he says it's not necessary to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. You know, if you sit there and if you do this 10% over a 10 years, look at what the projections get you. By 10% a year over 10 years, you go for $40,000 in profit to, to 1.4 million. $160,000 in revenue with these numbers up to $4 million. It works. So the keys to getting more profit is one is you have to know your five ways. You have to improve each of those drivers. You need to focus on it. You know, do you rely on one strategy to give you 100% of your leads or do you have 10 strategies to give you 10% of your leads or 20 different uh, lead generating strategies to give you 5% of your leads, right? In, the more strategies you're implementing, you can't do them all at once. That's why it just takes a little bit of time and some traction to be able to get us going, you know? But, but if you think about it, how many days a week are there? Work one strategy per day. Margin Mondays, Transaction Tuesdays, whatever Wednesdays, right? But you get the idea. You need to make it part of your everyday um, lifestyle and business activity. So now we have cash. So now we can now, because if we did niche before we did mastery, we'd be running into a lot of chaos in the problem. If we, we can't get into leverage, we need the cash flow from niche to be able to now invest in leverages and systems within, within our business, right? And leverage, leverage is creating that commercial profitable enterprise that works. It's all about creating systems. And what are systems? Are saving you time, energy, money, and sanity, right? It's, you know, it's, it's either money or time, right? Those are the things that we need to sit down and focus on. So uh, one of Brad Sugar's book, books, The Founder of Action Coach, Instant Systems, he talks about nine steps into systematizing a business. And some of them you might not even think about it, but it starts off with, understanding what your vision, mission, and culture is. Why, what does that have to do with the system? Because the system has to be within a certain culture, has to lead towards that mission and the vision that we're trying to create. That's why we're doing these. But once we understand that, then we need to set up SMART goals for what do we want the system to do, right? And then who is gonna do it? We need to understand what's the, not just have an organizational chart, but a functional chart. What are the functions of the business and what are the roles of these functions? And then who owns each role? And then whoever owns each role, there's a positional contract so they know what is expected in that function and the roles that they, that they own. So what are the, so we need to develop a KPI or a scorecard per each position, smart number, so we know if whether somebody is on track or not into reaching their goals and whether they're doing a good job or not. Then we have the how-to systems. Is how do we do this on a day-to-day -day basis? And the one part that most people leave out is then a management system to help us understand how to manage these people and hold people accountable. All right, so once we have these systems in place, now we're structured for growth. Now we could develop our team now this is where we start working for, and we've developed a company that we can now attract the best people in our industry, and that we now have a commercial a profitable enterprise that can start working without you. That's the value of the team. 
when we sit down and, and we help you build the team, when it really comes down to it, it starts with you, the business owner, right? But when you start your business, you're the one that's working in your business all the time. You're the one that's doing everything. And you're then dealing with the customers, right? And then you run out of time. Your business can only grow as much as you have the capacity to do the work. So then now what you do is you start hiring people to do whatever you can't do, right? But you're spinning your wheels and no one's really focusing on running the business. You're all focusing on doing the business. Your job as the leader is to now develop and support a team by training, paying them good wages, giving them um, benefits, giving them a vision to, 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 uh, to strive for. The teams now support your customers by being problem solvers, delivering their product and the service in a wow fashion. The customer now supports your business by, by obviously paying the bills, but also by providing referrals and, and for the business. And then now this is where the business starts supporting you, the business owner, so the business is working and you don't have to. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So there's six keys into building a team a winning team, and it starts off with you, strong leadership. But there needs to be a common goal around that. Not a goal is I want you guys to help me make six figures this year. It's what's our common goal of what is, does our business achieve? What do we provide? What are we doing to provide um, for our community? Or a lot of times, everybody wants to work for the best. So what do we need to be to, to be the best landscape company, the best CPA company or the best place to work for and that's a common goal because then we set up our rules of the game of of how we act and that's our culture that we developed and it's also the systems that we have to put. then what are our goals what's our plan to be able to become the best what are the things that we need to do and, and what's going to happen is as a business owner you have to support some risk taking and and being able to start as you start delegating giving more responsibility over to your team because we know they are going to make mistakes but you have to understand you have to use those as a training experience you have to make sure that you're training them well enough to reduce the types of mistakes that they're that they're making and help them to manage those and turn those mistakes into learning experiences but the most important thing is that everybody has to be on board. If nobody is really following the system that's going on, what we see then is nothing happened. It's like one bad apple kills it all. We need to create an engaged team because it's really said that 70% on average, 70% of employees and companies are disengaged in North America, according to Gallup. What we see is only 30%, means 30, only 30% 30 of, of us are engaged. Right, 50%, 2% are disengaged. They just show up, do their job and leave. 18% are actively disengaged. They're the ones that are really, that are throwing the anchor outside of the boat and say, hey, it's, it's slowing you down and nobody really realizes. So, you know, what can we do to turn those engaged or disengaged guys to being, become engaged and, and get rid of those actively disengaged guys? Because the same survey found out that for every $10,000 you pay a disengaged employee, it's costing you $3,000. So how do we develop engagement? You can't train engagement, right? It has to be developed. You know, training is transactional. And, uh, engagement is transformational. You know, it's not that we need more information. We need more action. Is what are the what are the success behaviors that we need to develop as a team that will lead us to that? And that's what I do is I help with my clients to guide them and their team to be able to understand what are the habits and the actions that they need to, as a team, develop to be able to bring great results into their business. And then the final step is synergy. This is where duplication, it's synergy and, and results. What are they equal? Is they equal? growth and freedom. So when we sit down and let's just do a quick review before we, we wrap up here, right? There's six steps to follow to get massive results in our business. The first step is, is in, the first step is mastery of your business. This is where we, we have to eliminate the chaos. 
The outcome here is to get your business to become stable. You're not concerned with making payroll um, at the end of the month or paying your bills. The second step is finding your niche, is how to differentiate yourself from your competition, how to be able to sell on value and not on price. The third step then is leverage. This is, this is when we can start leveraging ourselves out of the business and start creating more time for ourselves. And so that allows us to now develop, have time to develop a team. And the team produces a structure for your growth. You now have the ability to take longer vacations. You trust your team is going to be managing your business for you. As you begin to start looking for a general manager that can be brought in to run the business. And then the fifth step and the, and the sixth step is, 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 is really a synergy. This is where everything seems to be clicking. You can begin to strategize on your next stage of entrepreneurial activity. The business is a well-oiled machine. You know, passive income is, is now being generated and you could or you, uh, you're get, live off of that or you can now start looking to sell your business. But the final step is that result is that is really is what I call is really is the investor level. And this is where as a business owner, you're reaping the rewards of the business and investing in other business, businesses or takes you know, your, your time for your own personal growth. So these, what we've just talked about in the last half hour or so are the six steps to a massive result. Remember, to achieve massive results, you need to start with massive action. Massive results start with massive action. So I'll leave you with a couple of quotes. Hope you guys got some good BFOs out of this here today. We have a quote from Richard Bronson. If you can learn to run one business successfully, there's no reason that you can't run any number of businesses at the same time. The principles are still the same. So, so how much knowledge have you learned today? How much would it be worth to you if you start implying this over the next 5, 10, 15 years of your professional life? Imagine as working with a coach, how that can help you take that to that last next level and to be able to scale up so much faster. And then my favorite quotes here come from Jim Rohn, never wish your life was easier, wish that you were better, and you have to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And then my final quote that I'm going to wrap up with is with Brad Sugars, the founder of Action Coach. So he says that where you'll be in five years depends on the books you read and the people you associate and the actions that you will take. Because man is like a tree. We're either dying or we're growing. And what do we need to do to take that next step? So I want to thank you for investing your time within me. Please connect with me either on, um, on these various different areas, on, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and on Twitter. And for everybody that, that's been part, if you want to take the next step, please call my office for a free st uh, strategy session or go to the, the website on, online, the free dash strategy-session.com and uh, fill in some information and we'll call you back to, to schedule your free strategy session. It'll take the information that you learned how now and how can you really grow and really start discovering what the power is coaching all, is all about. So I want to again, thank you so much for taking your time and investing it here in the business, um, in this webinar. And it, it really the next thing to do is, is take this to the next level. Take this information, start applying it with your business right away. With that, have a great day. Bye.